Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, before I start the video, just want to apologize if my voice sounds off or if there's editing in the video, like kind of choppy because I have crazy allergies. It's just that time of year, everything dropped like overnight by me and uh, I could barely hear myself talk. My sinuses are packed, my ears are packed. Uh, if I start coughing or sneezing or something, I'll just edit that out. But uh, yeah, for me, my, my voice sounds extremely strange. Hopefully it picks up normal for you guys. But if it doesn't, now you know why. So anyway, this video is going to be uh, talking about the different knives that I actually collect. I get this question, not often, but I do get the question every now and again is, you know, what kind of knives do you actually keep that you're not willing to, to trade or sell? Like, what's your actual collection? Uh, it's very separate from my user knives, the knives that I'm, you know, doing reviews on or knives I just want to check out. Because uh, that's anything. There, there's no... No limits to what type of knife that I like to try. I'd like to try every knife there is. You know, obviously I never will. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter if it's big, small, expensive, cheap, you know, totally strange, uh, unpopular, popular, it doesn't matter. If it's got a cutting edge, I'm interested, I want to try it. But the knives I actually collect, a very different story. So uh, I've been collecting knives, you know, for 20 plus years. And uh, I've gone through many different phases. I went through a phase where I only collected automatics. Um, I went through a phase where I just collected Microtech specifically. I went through a craze where I was only collecting battle songs, you know. Um, I had a thing at, at some point for Ken Onion Design Kershaw's. That's all I wanted. I went through a Benchmade craze, a Spyderco craze, um, obviously a neck knife craze for a long time. And uh, these days things are a little bit different. <clears throat> a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And that's what this video is about. Just different types or styles of knife that I collect. So, uh, the first thing in the background here, you can see neck knives. All right, this is the Cold Steel Spike, and that is a MT Knives Genesis. That just represents neck knives. Um, for the last probably year, maybe year and a half or so, every neck knife that I've gotten in a trade or something, I've kept. I have not traded them back out. I actually have a knife collection specifically of neck knives. All right, so that's something that I want to just get as many different types of neck knives as possible. I just love them. As you guys know, I use and carry a neck knife every single day. So it's, it's awesome to have a big variety of them. So it's not just like collections in that. And that's another thing too, real quick, is that collecting knives doesn't mean you're not using them. They have to be brand new with the box and packaging and all that stuff. No, it's just you happen to keep them and you want to keep them. That's a collection. So in fact, most, if not all, I believe every single one of my neck knives I've carried and used. So I don't have any brand new unused neck knives, but I do have a very large collection of them now. But anyway, that is one thing I, I very much uh, enjoy collecting is neck knives specifically. Besides that, slip joints. Now this is just one representation. I grabbed just a couple random knives here. Uh, in the future, I'll probably end up doing a uh, collections video. I'll show you all the neck knives. I'll show you all the battle songs and so forth. But this one just represents slip joints. I love all types of slip joints and I, I like trying different types of patterns. In other words, if I have like a, for example, this is a Texas toothpick, uh, I happen to have a larger collection of Texas toothpicks as well as a larger collection of trappers, a traditional trapper. However, I'm trying to get basically one of every different pattern or at least as many as I can possibly get. So if it's unique and it's a type of slip joint I don't have, that's something that would go into my collection not to be traded or sold then of course battle songs this is that antique um, german battle song and then here's a benchmade 32 it's the mini morpho i love battle songs i always have i have a huge regret of selling my battle song collection you guys probably saw that video uh which was years ago went to a girl in hawaii i'm not sure whatever happened to it i don't know if she still has the whole collection I think I sold the whole thing for like $1,000. Uh, it was definitely worth well more than $1,000. And to be honest, I don't even remember why. I know it was a money thing. I needed to either pay bills or buy a car. I forget what it was specifically, but I needed money. That was the asset that I decided to get rid of. And uh, I do regret it. And a lot of specific battle songs are very hard to find. And, um, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm starting to build my battle song collection up again now. What's interesting about battle songs and trading, now of course you could buy battle songs anytime you want. And if you want rare ones, well you just gotta spend more money. You can definitely find them. If there's a specific battle song you want, it's out there somewhere, but the price tag might be through the roof. Um, I'll give you a great example of a battle song I want in my collection that I probably won't have for many years, and that would be a Benchmade Model 49 with a crisp blade. 
I would imagine if you saw one pop up for sale, it'd be two grand or more if it was new. But anyway, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I love battle songs. I always have, always will. But now, with uh, trying to obtain more battle songs without buying them, only trading, I found that most guys who have battle songs only want to trade for more battle songs. It, it's pretty uh, pretty different than everything else here. Like I can get neck knives and trade. I could trade a fixed blade for a neck knife or a folder or whatever. All kinds of stuff. Uh, same thing with folders. I could trade pretty much anything for a folder. But battle song guys are into battle songs. And more times than not, when someone says, hey, I got this battle song, are you interested? I'm like, oh, totally. And they're like, okay, well, I ask them what they're looking for. And they say, well, you know, what other battle songs do you have? I'm like, oh, man. Like, I don't want to give up battle songs to get new ones. I'll never grow a collection. I'll just constantly change out what I have. So that's, uh, it just is what it is. Battle song guys are, that's it. They're like hardcore. The battle song community is such a tight knit place. And those guys are just into it. Unlike, like folding knives, there's a million different types of people who use folding knives, right? But battle song people, they flip and that's like what they do. Uh, the most of the, most of those guys in the community who have like decent collections, that's all they do is they flip and they collect. You know, they're not that into folders and fixed blades and using knives other than flipping their battle song. So uh, although that's cool, definitely makes it harder for me to trade for new battle songs. In fact, uh, right now, as I'm making this video, I was talking to a guy on Instagram who has my original Up Armored Model 42. Uh, I did a video on it, you can look it up if you never saw that video, but uh, Up Armored was a, a company that did, um, you know, like Cerakoting and, um, you know, different types of uh, finishes on stuff. And they, they were focusing on guns, but at the time I had a, a new Benchmade Model 42, and I really wanted to get it, you know, customized. And they did this like, kind of camo skull pattern on there. It's unique, there was literally one of them in the world, it was mine. At some point, I sold it or traded it. And I don't know where it's been all these years. I don't know how many hands it's passed through, but I literally found the guy who owns it. And right now I'm talking to see if we could do a trade. But the first thing he said, because I'm like, well, what do you want for it? What are you looking for? He said, more battle songs. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Can't blame him, you know? But I don't know. I don't know if that'll work out or not. But yeah, I love uh, battle songs. I'm trying to build a collection back up. And yes, once I get. A decent sized collection. I'll certainly do a video so you guys can, you know, kill the curiosity of which ones I have. Uh, the next thing is unique knives. That's what these two are representing here. Um, I have a uh, Spider Co. This is a waved Matriarch 2, I believe. It's just a little unique. It's definitely not the average run of the mill knife. Now, although this is a little bit of an exception for my unique knife collection. Generally speaking, what I'm looking for are knife mechanisms that are very unique, all right? Things that you just don't see. It's not a very common design. Like, for example, the Kershaw ET. That's a specific knife uh, I'm looking for. Um, I have the Quartermaster, you know, version, which is the original, I believe. But, you know, just weird knives. I love weird, specifically folding knives. So, different mechanisms, strange locking, you know, mechanisms, uh, opening mechanisms. This happens to be an old Kershaw. I think this is a 7, 1770, yeah, 1770. I forget the name of this model. Uh, but this happens to have a separate piece that functions as a flipper. It's like an assisted piece. So it's not actually connected to the blade. It's not part of the blade. It's its own piece of metal. But when you push this down, it pushes on the back of the blade and assists it open. So this was like, uh, you know, pre-flipper type stuff. Pretty interesting. Not a very expensive knife, long out of production, but uh, interesting. I like that. I like it because it's different. It's unique. I've had hundreds of really strange, unique knives over the years I got rid of, and now I'm trying to build up that collection. Something that's different, uh, you know, the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, there were just so many different knives, even, you know, today and, uh, you know, last decade or so. But more so, I would say, in the 80s and 90s, uh, there was just a lot of innovation. You know, all different companies and, and knife makers are trying to come up with the new coolest thing. And there's some weird knives out there. Some are completely ugly, some are, you know, kind of dumb, but I love them all. I want to collect them. So, very unique knives. Now, the last thing, and this, this seems like a pretty broad spectrum, but it's basically knives I really, really, really like. Specific patterns and or knives that have a story behind them. That's what these two are representing. So this is the Gerber Easy Out, not an expensive knife, 
but this one has a big story, which I've told before. This is a knife that um, I was carrying when I got into an accident. I got into a, uh, an accident with my friend in his Jeep Cherokee, his Grand Cherokee. We flipped a bunch of times when we finally stopped moving. We were upside down, our seatbelts were locked, and he never carried a knife, of course I always did. And this is the, the knife I cut myself and him out of our restraints. We were literally hanging upside down with our seatbelts. I had to cut ourselves free to get out of the vehicle. And so that has a special meaning to me. I, I carried that knife for probably two years before that, that day. And uh, I for months and months after that day as well. And then eventually I just put it away in my little collection. And I knew I'd never want to get rid of it. It, it, I don't, so it didn't save my life or anything. I mean, if I didn't have a knife at all, we probably just would have been hanging there for a couple hours until someone found us. But this was on a dirt road. There was no houses back there, no businesses back there. It was kind of a cut through, not very heavily traveled at all. So we could have literally been hanging there for a couple hours. So I'm glad I had a knife and that happened to be the one I had. So that has a big story that means something to me. Now, most of you guys know the story with this knife. This is a Chris Reeve Sebenza. This is the small classic with the micarta inlays. Uh, this means a lot to me for two reasons. Number one, I got this when my grandfather passed away. I wanted something to kind of distract me from the sadness of, of what was happening, the reality of when a, a loved one, you know, goes. And I wanted to commemorate him a little bit. He loved owls uh, for a lot of different reasons, and so I got an owl. I got a custom uh, sheath from a Canadian maker. He did an amazing job on this. But got the little owl on there, a little black and white theme. Um, but also, besides this reminding me of my uh, grandfather, it's also the most expensive knife I've ever bought in my life. Now, I've had knives that were worth three or four times what this is worth, but I've got them in trades. Uh, I had a, a nice William Henry knife, which was like 700 and something dollars. I traded my Zippo collection for that. You know, I've traded uh, guns for knives that were more expensive. But I never spent more on a single knife than I have with this one. This one, at the time, I think cost me 330 bucks plus shipping from New Graham Knives. No, I'm sorry, Knife Art, that's where I got this. I remember back in the day, I used to buy a lot of knives from New Graham, but this one I got from knifeart.com, and when I bought it, I also bought a Zippo with Knife Art logo on the front, which I still have as well. So this has a big story to me, a couple different stories pertaining to that. So that's a knife I'll just always have. I'll never get rid of it, never sell it. I do occasionally carry it and use it. So that pretty much covers it guys. Those are the styles of knives I actually collect. And by collect, I mean I'm trying to build a collection uh, and always add to those collections, but also those are the knives that I'm not easily willing to sell or trade, okay? So again, neck knives, knives of the story, very unique knives, ballast songs, and slip joints, more specifically unique slip joints, or at least patterns I don't have. So that is pretty much it, um, you know, you never know what the future holds. I may change my mind again. I, I've done it for the last 20 plus years, so <laughs> who's to say I won't you know, sell my battle song collection again. But for now, I, I feel like these are the types or styles of knives I'm gonna be collecting for, for many years. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But that's it. I'd love to hear down in the comment section what types of knives you specifically collect. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And for all the people out there dealing with allergy symptoms, seasonal allergies, I feel for you. It is kicking my butt right now. So I'm hoping that everything drops off the trees, all the flowers open up, and it's done with soon. So we will see. Have a good one, guys. We'll talk to you later. Take care.